Hi class, so I wanted to walk you all through um, really quickly how to access and download your data from Qualtrics after having used it to um, do a survey. So um, for my students, uh, you're gonna go to niu.edu and access Qualtrics through our quick links menu. If you happen to be someone just happens who just wants the other <laughs> information, uh, you'll access Qualtrics through whatever organization or university through which uh, you have your access. Uh, you might need to put in your credentials, but if you've um, uh, accessed it recently, you might just, and it's saved your password or whatever, you might jump right into um, Qualtrics on the homepage. If for some reason you aren't on the homepage, uh, there should be a menu up here that says uh, home at the top. You can just click and it should bring you there. Um, so there are a couple of different ways that you might be able to access uh, what we need to get into. First of all, if you've accessed the survey that you need to get the data for recently, you might see it here in this recently visited uh, tab, which has you know, just a couple of the most recently accessed uh, surveys that you've worked on. Um, in addition, you can click on this see all projects button over here or um, up at that menu, you can go to projects. Either, any of those will take you to this same place here uh, where you can uh, find a comprehensive list of all of the surveys that uh, you have um, worked on. Um, so what you need to do then is go through and find the survey that you need the data for. Um, so I'm going to use this one smartphone use survey right here. So something that you'll notice is that it says that the survey is active. You can see that the surveys kind of around it for the most part are closed. Now it, you do not have to close out your survey or stop collecting data uh, to access your data. Um, or that sounded funny, uh, but yes, you don't have to uh, close it out um, to or stop collecting data to actively uh, look at or download the data that you have already collected <laughs> um, is in essence what I meant there. Um, so you you there are situations in which you might need to c continue to actively collect data sometimes uh people are downloading for like a preliminary uh look at what data has been collected so far in which case you'd probably want the the survey to remain active right um but otherwise what you would want to do if you're done collecting survey data and you don't want any more data to be collected uh you can close out and you should close out your survey when when that time comes so how you do that um, over here there is a little three dot menu here so we're going to click that go up to the top and it says close it will bring up this dialog box here where you can make uh, one of two choices so this applies if someone happened to be taking your survey as you were attempting to close it so in that event there are two options one you can stop them from recording any additional data on the survey uh, you would collect a partial response um, there are settings related to partial responses which i I'm not going to show you right now, um, but this might uh, stop them at a certain point in the survey, or you'll only collect, uh, you know, whatever sections of the survey that they've completed, um, things like that. Um, but you can look into that if you think this is something that would ever uh, need to be addressed for you. Um, the other option is that you can allow them to finish, which means that your uh, survey will not really completely close until after they have completed their um, the, the survey that they have started. Um, so you can choose whichever of these you wish. I'm going to go ahead and just stop recording at that point. Um, typically, I will stop my survey or I will really close collection like the day after I tell people it closes um, or at least a few hours after. So that way I can sort of justify uh, purging any additional responses because they were collected after like the advertised uh, time and date that it was supposed to close. Um, and that's something that you could do though when you call your data later in Excel. Um, so, but you need to get the data to put into Excel before that. So, so let's go ahead and continue on what, what we're doing. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop them. So I'll pause response collection. Um, oh, there was an error, okay. Um, well, that's, let's try this again. Pause response collection. 
There we go. Okay. Um, so <laughs> uh, now you'll see that it's closed here. Okay. Um, now I need to go into my actual survey to uh, access the data. So I'm going to click in and it'll bring me to the page uh, where it sort of defaults, which is where you build your survey, right? This should look familiar if you uh, built your survey. Um, now what we need to do is up here in these tabs, there are a few things that you can see. There is a reports tab, which I'm not really going to show you much of today, but there are ways where you can sort of uh, cre create certain reports um, that will show, I mean, just it sort of depends on what you ask it for. Um, so uh, this, this though, it requires a lot more function than I think you all at this level are probably going to need. So we're not going to use this function, but it is here. Um, the, there's the results section. Now this is sort of a nice place for you to get sort of a quick look at, you know, how certain people responded to your data. So over here on the side, you can find little um, particular breakdowns of particular questions. Now this is going to be great for some just overarching looks at some of your particular questions and you know how people answered. But if you really want to get down to some of the, of the nitty gritty to sort of understand how um, some of the you know questions that you asked and things like that might be related to things like you know demographic data and things like that, it's probably going to be much more beneficial to you uh, to you download the information in a spreadsheet so that way you can um I'm going to use the word manipulate here, but you don't want to like manipulate your data in such a way that you change it, but you can manipulate um, the sort of view of your data in Excel, meaning you can um, organize or um, change the ordering of responses. So that way you can like group certain people who responded the same way together, etc. cetera. Um, this will be more made a little bit more clear in the uh, video where I talk about, you know, working some of the basics of working with survey data. data. Um, but anyways, the purpose though here is sort of just general looks at like very specific questions, right? Um, so to kind of get a better look at how um, certain questions relate sometimes to demographic data and sort of try and find some more nuanced looks at your data, um, Excel is much better for that, I think. So to access the file that we need for Excel, we're going to go to this data and analysis button. Um, so that other thing is useful for kind of, you know, broad picture. This is going to help you find nuance. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to download the, the file with the data in it. Um, I'm going to go to this button that says export and import, and I'm going to export data. Now it sort of depends on what program you're going to use um, to do this. But I think most of my students, just because we have access to O365, um, you are going to probably want to do an ex something that's going to work well with Excel. There are some programs, though, that are more specialty programs that might prefer other file types, like a CSV, for example. Um, comma separated value is one of the more common ones to use, but if you're using Excel, um, I would actually recommend you using a TSV. Um, this is actually something that they re recommend from Qualtrics as well, just in terms of um, sort of the compatibility and things like that, TSVs just work well. You could also do it in an Excel file um, in general, but um, especially depending on the number of responses you have, as it says here, a TSV is really recommended. So we're gonna go with the TSV here. Um, and that stands for tab separated values. Okay, so there are a couple of things that you need to, um, to keep in mind here or look at. Um, you can, oops. Sorry, I'm just, you know, just clicking on things. Um, you can download all fields. I would just recommend just download all fields. Um, Sir, Qualtrics does collect a few other pieces of data um, that might be relevant, like the date it was taken, time, whatever. So I just usually download that. And then any of the um, information that I deem like not really necessary, um, I will um, I will purge that at the, in the Excel sheet itself. 
Um, okay, so then down here, there's also the option that says numeric responses or choice text. So you can, there's a radio button, you can choose which of the two you'd like. So use numeric values. What this means is that for any question that you asked, um, so let's use an example of the, you know, one of the demographic questions of like gender identity or whatever. Um, if you gave them four choices, like male, female, other, please give your own description, or prefer not to answer. That's four different options that they had. So basically they would code their answers. So if we're in on that example question of gender, if someone responded that they are male, it will assign it a one in the response box. If they answered female, it would be two because that was the second of the choices that they had when they answered that question. Um, the, if they answered other and provided their own, it would give a three. Um, and if they chose prefer not to say, or to, to not to answer rather, um, it would assign it a four. Okay. And so basically it just assigns a number based on the numeric value of the choice or the ordered choice that they had. So if they chose the first answer that, that they could have chosen, it'll give it a one. If they chose the second response, they could have chosen, it'll give it a two, etc. Okay. Now this does have value sometimes. Um, if you are part of like a really big study and you have like graduate assistants that are going to be, um, you know, culling through some of your data, for example, uh, but you don't necessarily need the people who are doing that job to know sort of like the nuance or like the specificities of answers that were provided. Um, and you want to keep that a little bit more anonymous for whatever reason. Um, this is a really good way to do that because then you can pass off like certain tasks, for example, um, to people who, who can do that. Um, now, if you do this, though, of course, keep in mind that you are going to need to create some sort of a key for yourself. Uh, so that way, you know, which of those numbers is associated with which answers, right? So if they answered um, a one on question two, what does that answer actually mean, right? <laughs> um, so keep a key for yourself. Um, if you watched the video and or have been through my class and sh know that I usually use a Word document to create my um, my surveys um, that have like all the answers like associated with it. So that way it's a quick sort of copy paste over into Qualtrics. Uh, a file like that is a really, really useful um, to anyone who might use this numeric value, right? Because you can kind of utilize that as a key as long as you kept the ordering of your responses the same as it appears in the Word document that you used to sort of guide the creation of your survey. Um, okay, so if you choose use choice text, and this is what I would typically re recommend any of my students who are doing this for a paper in my class, you should not have anyone culling through your data for you, you should be doing it yourself. Uh, but if you happen to be uh, someone just looking for Qualtrics information who happens upon this video, this that might be, you know, something that applies to you. Um, but use choice text is usually what I recommend my students use because that means it's literally in in the box in a Excel going to give you the literal text of the response that they provided. So um, if they chose, just going back to the gender uh, question, for example, um, if they chose male, it's going to say male in the box. If they chose prefer not to say, it's going to say prefer not to say in, in the Excel uh, cell. Okay. So I'm going to go with use choice text for that reason. I feel like it simplifies things, <laughs> uh, at least for me. Um, and I'm going to click download. And you'll probably notice in just a moment something flash up to my downloads folder up here. Yep, there it goes. Um, if for some reason that didn't happen for you, you can download from right here. Just press this button. Um, I'm on a Mac. So that's you know, it looks one way. Uh, if you're on a PC, it will probably be something towards the bottom of your screen uh, that pops up. At least that used to be what a PC is. It's been a little while since I've been on one. Uh, but usually a file will pop up in a bar down at the bottom and you there's usually a little carrot like or a little arrow there that you can click that will give you a menu to open the downloaded file. Um, but okay, so let's go ahead and I'll sort of show you this. Um, so if I go up here, um, I can click into my file. Now, 
if you're at least on a Mac, this is what happens to me. <laughs> um, it is going to try to auto open it in your note reader, but you don't want it from there. So I'm going to close it out. And what you can do is you're going to bring up your finder window and go to downloads. You're going to find the, um, I have the TSV right here. So I'm going to right click and choose open with, and then I'm going to go to um, Excel, okay? So then it kind of brings it up here and you can kind of see what the data looks like approximately. Now, this data needs to be cleaned up. There are problems with it. For example, it has read the option of three to six to mean the 6th of March. So this is something that would need to be cleaned up on our data, um, you know, moving the the format of that cell to be just regular rather than a date. <laughs> so it would say three through six, for example. Um, but so there are things that need to be cleaned up in this data, uh, but that's going to be another video. So, but this will at least get you to the point where you can access some of that general information um, in Qualtrics in that um, uh, results section up top, and then also allow you to download your data to access it in Excel and play with the data um, to see what kind of fun uh, patterns you can find uh, regarding how certain people, you know, answered questions and things like that. Um, but again, that will be sort of gone over in a different video. Um, and so hopefully you'll watch that next and uh, let me know if you have questions. Um, thanks for watching.